Hello everyone, I'm Penrose 776 there's a new Legendary Heroes banner out. I've got no idea who's going to be on it. To be honest, they've kind of exhausted all the obvious Legendary Heroes already. That's a funny looking silo. Oh, Byleth. Okay. It is another, a second Legendary Byleth. Um, well, I can't say I expected that. Um, does kind of make sense. Free Houses is still popular. They still keep making Free Houses banners. Um, but this is the first time they've actually duplicated a legendary hero. Obviously, since Male Byleth already legendary. So I guess this is good news for Robin fans, right? If you want to see legendary Male Robin, I guess he is now back on the menu. Uh, that being said, um... I guess not the most exciting pick, you can tell because I'm only mildly excited. Hopefully, her kit makes up for that. Starting off with a professorial guide. Accelerate special trigger, cooldown count minus one. If you initiate combat or is within two spaces of an ally, grants attack speed, death res plus five to unit and neutralizes effects that grants special cooldown charge plus X to foe or inflicts special cooldown charge minus X on unit during combat. Allies within two spaces gain, neutralizes effects that grant special cooldown charge plus X to foe, or inflict special cooldown charge minus X on unit during combat. Oh, I actually like what they've done here. So, for reference, original Byleth, original Byleth had the Sword of the Creator, which was null follow up, and then this null special cooldown charge denial or acceleration on foe effect, which I'll just call Null Guard for convenience, even though it's a bit more than Null Guard, right? Because it also prevents them from charging their special any faster. But still, Null Guard. Um, and then Legendary Byleth, male version, um, had the Null Follow-Up half of that weapon, and also Drive Null Follow-Up. Legendary Byleth, female version, has the Null Guard half, and Drive Null Guard. And honestly, that already, just by itself, really strong. Because, well, I mean, I look, say this a lot, having your specials be guaranteed, having them show up on time, lets you do an immense amount of planning ahead in combat, and it lets specifically certain units who can then also use special acceleration to get really big specials, it allows those units to function, more or less, otherwise they tend to get shut down pretty hard by guard, unless they're stacking way more special acceleration than they need against an ordinary unit, if you get my drift. Um, the classic example Right, Volk. Volk, his entire strength comes from he has lethality and he has a kit that allows him to proc lethality straight away. This, this is basically the main driving element of Volk's kit right there, except it can be granted to anyone. Meaning, for just one example, for instance, any dagger unit with a slaying effect in their weapons, so um, Yuri and other dag units as well, but oh goodness, Yuri um, can, with a little bit of bioleth support, become Volk. Just stick Lethality on them, it's a done deal. Um, another example, in my... Heck, if I just think about my own Aetherades team, right? You drop this guy, uh, this not guy, um, the, the other Byleth is a guy, this one isn't, um, in the middle of a team, you can... Because think about armor fights, right? Armor fights especially, you're expecting armors to have special acceleration and guard, both. So, like, your Fallen Adel Guards trading, your Brave Hectors trading, all those sorts of things, running special fighter or bold fighter or what have you, you're going from a situation where you're both running all of these special charging and special 
denying effects so that you can just charge your specials normally, to, with this one piece of support, now you're getting your special charged twice as fast and they're getting no special at all. So, just an immense tool for save balls as well. And like, all in all, I think that Null Follow-Up is a stronger effect than Null Guard, but I think that Drive Null Guard is a stronger effect than Drive Null Follow-Up. Because if you think about the situations where you use Null Follow-Up best, half of that is very offensively on player phase, which is the kind of situation where you're a bit more having to play around the limitations of drive skills for two space radius. Um, however, the guard effect, the special cooldown acceleration, the special cooldown denial, that is honestly at its strongest when you're taking the first hit, you're tanking, because that can let you reply with a special immediately is my train of thought, at least. Other people might disagree. Anyway, really strong PRF weapon there. Ruptured Sky, which was introduced on Byleth, interestingly not getting the PRF um, Sublime Heaven that Legendary Byleth has, this other Legendary Byleth. Boosts damage by 20% of foe's attack. If in combat against a dragon foe or beast foe, boosts damage by 40% instead of 20%. It's usually worth running ish but honestly it does kind of like if you compare it to say moonbow they are surprisingly similar against most of the targets that you actually have trouble killing so it's cool it's not quite like the super special though it is roughly on par with the other specials, just for different situations. Attack speed ideal for, okay, um, I believe Legendary Byleth, the other one, had attack defense ideal for. The attack speed ideal also works, honestly. Um, lull speed res 3, uh, the lull, these skills seem pretty good, honestly. This is swinging her very much as a very offensively focused unit. I'm not sure how tanky she's going to be. Um, she might have issues getting killed on counterattacks before she herself actually gets to finish off the opponent. We'll see about that. And then her actual PRF is in the C slot. Goddess Bearer. At start of turn, if you use it within, within two spaces of an ally, grants attack speed plus seven, null follow-up, and the following status to unit for one turn. Unit can move to a space adjacent to any ally within two spaces. Okay. So, oh, that then, that then means that as a solo unit, this Byleth might actually be stronger. Um, because you've got no follow-up. You've got no follow-up being granted in your C slot. Um, meaning that in terms of like, own combat potential, the only thing this Byleth has behind the other Byleth is not having that special um, something heaven, sublime heaven. But then you also have that special acceleration which you can run with, for instance, a variety of things in the B slot. Uh, wind sweep, for one is the obvious one, but there's other options as well. You could do Special Spiral, um, just comes to mind. Um, and it doesn't have to be Ruptured Sky, it could be... There's a lot of different options. If you ran a Special Acceleration S slot, something like Flashing Blade, you could run a free cooldown special, like Luna. Like, all sorts of things. Um, so that's definitely definitely worth thinking about. Plus getting attack speed plus seven is nice. It's giving you bonuses to make sure that ideal is always activated. That's a very nice thing. And the orders is a neat 
extra touch as well. Orders, honestly, I know I say this a lot, one of the best movement effects in the game. It's no longer the best movement effect in the game because Ash exists um, and Ash equivalent effects exist, but it is still way up there. So yeah, all in all, I think this is, if not a particularly exciting unit, like in terms of who they are, nonetheless very exciting in terms of what they have. Let's see their animations real quickly. And I do like the Free Houses music as well, I've always liked the Free Houses music. Yeah, pretty convincing damage, admittedly against a red Fafnir. She's a blue tone infantry, even though, just like the other legendary Byleth, she does have a sword. She's also a wind season, which is worth noting. <laughs> Gatekeeper, um, someone's stealing your style. Oh, and let's look at who's on the banner with her. Leaf, Freya, uh, legendary Lelina, Seiros, uh, the other legendary Byleth, Gatekeeper, Marth, Marianne, Brave Erica, Yuri, and Ash. And of course, we're standing at 8% rate. Uh, let's go through the colors, color by color. Well, to begin with, blue, Seiros, still honestly my, my personal favorite pick for Astro Anima Mythic. Well, behind Mirabilis, but you need to run an extra slot Mythic if you want the extra slot. It's between her and Oda. Oda is very strong, but his natural Kanto makes him quite cantankerous to work with. Brave Erica is kind of obscenely strong and just has very good skills as well. That Surge Sparrow, that um, Menace skill, um, plus the insane specials that she has, the damage reduction to get them off. Um, she's a strong unit by herself and she gets even stronger with merges definitely worth pulling. So blue I'd call a very good color here. Next strongest, hmm, tough one to say. Hmm, green looks pretty good, not gonna lie. The other legendary Byleth is still very strong in his own right. Um, Freya, Offense Mythic, you always need more copies of Offense Mythics. And Gatekeeper, I've made a video, Gatekeeper's the best unit in the game. Um, Red, also quite strong. Mar Muff and Leaf are both in a kind of interesting spot. Like, they're not bad units. Um, they're not really conducive to how I play, but um, you probably know if you want Muff and Leaf. And then legendary, le, 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 legendary Lilina, there we go, I got it out, is just an absolute powerhouse with that instant AoE special. AoE special, super impactful, whatever the state of the meta game, because they ignore in combat buffs. And then colorless, uh, Brave Marianne, um, maybe lacking a little, but Ash, one of the best movement units in the game, possibly the best in my own opinion. Um, and Yuri, who is one of the other best movement units in the game. Anyone who's been playing Summoner's Duels recently knows what Yuri can do. Oh boy, am I fed up with him. So honestly, all four of these colors are pretty great. Um, also, there's a bit more of this video, um, so Let's keep going, see what the heck's going on there. Standard ability, availability, obviously. And there's sparking! Wait, 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 wait. L limit, limited to Fey Pass? Subscribers? Huh? Faye, are you okay? It... That's absurd. 
frankly. Um, someone at IS obviously said, hey buddy, um, we're not selling enough of that uh, dang billy old Fay pass. Um, put something in it that will make it make people buy lots of Fay pass. And I'm gonna be honest, this is it. This is what will make people buy lots of Fay pass. I do not like it at all. Um, because it, it's sparking. It's. You know, let me try and put this in perspective. Let, let's say you're sparking on a normal banner, right? There is one unit that you want, a specific. Let's go with a red unit. Um, worst case scenario, a spark for you is 40 summons. If you're doing one summon on each roll, and then just quitting out of the circle because you are, say, sniping for a specific color. Then worst case scenario, you're looking at 200 orbs equivalent. So that's 195 orbs if you're getting that first free summon, or 175 orbs if the banner also has tickets, say, forging bonds or whatever. At the 200 orb mark, you're looking at around a 69%, like two, two thirds plus chance of getting that unit that you want before hitting Biddy, before hitting a spark. And even then the spark is still super valuable because it's putting an upper limit on the amount of orbs that you have to spend to get that unit that you want. You can go into the banner and say, well, I want one copy of this unit. How much am I going to have to spend? Well, 195 orbs, 175 orbs, or looking at more like regularly because it's a forging bonds or whatever. If you're just going for the spark straight out of the gate, 135 orbs. It's really strong to be able to go into the banner and just say, all right, that's what I want. But those, those are new heroes. Now we go on to the legendary banner. Okay, the legendary banner has a couple things that you need to be aware of. First things first, the legendary banner has the strongest, or well, not necessarily strongest, but the most influential units to your score and the metagame in certain modes. Like, Mythics obviously directly influence your score in um, Aether Raids, of course they do, and on top of that in Mjolnir Strike as well. Mythics are there for Mjolnir Strike scoring. And the game actually puts a very heavy emphasis on, at least for Aether Raids, having at least one copy of every mythic due to their bonus seasons. But they're not on a 3% rate, they're on an 8% rate split three ways. So, unlike regular banners where you can go in and pull for that focus and the focus character that you get is going to be that focus hero on the legendary banner you know you are getting one of three a lot of the time you're going to have to pull for multiple like focus heroes worth of orbs in order to get one copy of the focus character that you actually want i mean look at me look at me i am the person who has a plus six naga because i was summoning for legendary edelgard and sniping green legendary and mythic banners anyone who rolls fairly frequently on them will know that sometimes they just do not give you what you want and so and so, being able to go onto those banners and leave within 195 orbs maximum 
and say, I got one copy of this character that I wanted. Nuts. It's an insane saving in terms of like the upper bound of how much you might have ended up having to spend on that banner that's exacerbated by the fact that these legendary and mythic heroes banners are like way more unlikely or they're, they're split three ways compounded further by the fact that if you want to stay me meta relevant you are needing specific new units from the legendary and mythic heroes banners really what it is right um who's this targeted at well not whales i mean maybe whales will whales will probably take it anyway because it's a good value right sure you're already spending all this money on this banner why not get a spark for an extra free unit sure but i think who it's really targeted at the people who are set to make the most like quote unquote saving in terms of orb count from this are the people who are approaching these banners to get one copy of a specific unit from them and then leave um, so that is players who are like for whom orbs are actually a like tight resource players who are being like really careful with their orb count it's designed to be an absurdly good offer to players who up until now were free to play by saying well here's how many hundreds of orbs you could potentially save compared to your normal summoning session on this banner to put it another way it is the gateway drug um because this is a real effect that people have like measured once you've spent just a little bit of money on something like this it becomes way easier mentally to spend more money on it if you spent nothing at all making that first step to spend money on it is like pretty pretty tough hurdle to overcome because you haven't spent money um but once you've spent like 10 quid or whatever for a month of fay pass um it suddenly becomes way easier to be like oh well i'll spend money on other things on more fay pass instead this is this is how they're looking to onboard you onto being a whale or at the very least a dolphin. Um, so be aware of that going into it. That being said, you are set to make a pretty immense orb saving here if that describes you, the person who is going into mythic hero, legendary hero banners and looking for specifically one unit. Um, personally, I've always taken the rates into account. I've always had the rule of you only summon on the Mythic Legendary Hero banner if you want all three units in the color category that you're rolling for. And ideally, preferably multiple colors you want all three units from just so that there are no like, outs where the banner can give you what you don't want because the banner will give you what you don't want. Um, but I, yeah, I don't like it. Um, I'm, and I mean, I can't read your minds, but I'm assuming you don't like it either. <laughs> kind, of, kind of scummy move. Um, all things considered, you, well, I mean, it will sell more fake pass. That's pretty much a given. Um, luckily for us, they do accept feedback. Um, and compared to other gacha game developers at least they do actually listen to that feedback so because i mean like I, i'm not even against the idea of giving fey pass users more sparks even like if they'd gone oh yeah fey pass users get an additional spark on banners that already have sparks that'd be fine um because it'd be fine honestly sure they're like sure they're spending money to get extra sparks but people who aren't spending money probably don't have um enough orbs to benefit from all those extra sparks anyway i know i sure don't um but giving sparks to fey pass users 
on the banner that sparks are most impactful on, and also the banner that like has the units that are most impactful, and then not giving those sparks to regular users creates a massive disparity, not between free-to-play players and whales, because the disparity there is still staying pretty much the same. Whales could have got those units anyway, they just rolled for them, they've got the orbs right. But between players who've spent no money and players who've spent a tiny amount of money, well, comparatively tiny, 10 quid is honestly like a decent amount still, or whatever it is in your currency. Um, but the difference between players who've spent no money and the players who've spent on just Fade Pass, they're making that really wide here. And I don't like that. Um, but hey, at least the character's good, right? Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you all next time.